Welcome to Nationwide Today on the network service of the NTA. I'm Elizabeth Omori. Let's begin with the political crisis in Mali. Talks in Mali aimed at resolving the political situation in the aftermath of last week's coup have ended without an agreement. The country's new military leaders and West African mediators wrap up days of talks without settling on how to return to civilian role. The leader of ECOWAS delegation, former Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan, said President Ibrahim Keita has indicated that he has resigned and that he was not forced to do so and does not want to go back to power. He said the issue of lifting sanctions was discussed by both parties and promised to make the points during an extraordinary summit of the heads of states and government of ECOWAS, which should be holding this Wednesday. The Malian junta undertook promise to release the other personalities arrested depending on the situation in the country. Now, what could be described as one of the greatest news today in Niger's health sector, the African continent and beyond, is the removal of the country from the list of polio endemic countries by the World Health Organization, having been able to achieve and maintain the three years zero polio status that qualifies countries for certification. The former presentation of the certificate, which is virtual, is scheduled to hold at the presidential villa, where President Mohamed Buhari would receive it from the World Health Organization on behalf of Nigeria. Following Niger's certification, Afghanistan and Pakistan are now the only two polio endemic countries in the world. Details of the presentation of the certificate will come later. Now to mining. President Mohamed Buhari has promised his administration's continued support to the genuine efforts by Zamfara state government to restore sanity and a desired impetus in the exploitation as well as exploration of the abundant solid mineral potential in the state. Receiving the governor of the state, Bela Mohamed, the president expressed the belief that if illegal mining activities are checked, security and socio-economic development will be enhanced in the state. State House correspondent Adam Osambo reports. Governor Bello Muhammad Matawali, accompanied by one Bashir Hadeja, was in the State House to show President Muhammad Buhari bars of gold and other precious stones mined in the state. The products, he said, were acquired directly from artisanal miners as part of efforts to check illegal mining activities in the state. And some people from outside the country used to come to the state and buy gold and other precious stones from all these uh, small-scale miners. I uh, make my investigation, which make me to make the state government to be engaging the miners so that we shall be buying the gold from them, so that uh, we can, you know, block that uh, chain. I come to show him what the state government has already procured from the miners, from those people in the bush. So he has seen what we have. We have so many cages of gold in Zamora State. He's very happy with the system that uh, we initiated, and uh, he said whatever support the state government need, the private government is ready to assist us. In fact, you have been given directives to the Minister of Solid Minerals to work with the state government. In fact, Governor Bello Mohammed said three days back, large deposits of gold have been discovered in the state and the villagers are trooping in thousands to the size for illegal mining activities. So I come to get some uh, advice from Mr. President on how best we are going to tackle the issue of this uh, illegal mine, which we have discussed, and he, he gave me all the support. And uh, in the next uh, few days, uh, the people of Zamprasta will see a lot of changes, particularly in the mining sector. Discussions with the president also centered on, amongst others, how Zamfara State can benefit from the presidential artisanal gold mining initiative as well as the security situation in the state. 
You know, you can't be hearing all sort kind of that mass killing in the state because the security are doing their best. I equally advise Mr. President and those that are calling for second of security is not the solution. They should think of the best way to support the security so that they can perform better. The governor who commended the president for his intervention towards the restoration of normalcy in the state, however, maintained that governors have crucial roles to play in supporting efforts at securing lives and property of their people. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And still on mining, operators in the metal industry have applauded the efforts by the federal government in reviewing the minerals and metal sector of the economy. This was during a stakeholders forum organized by the Federal Minister of Mines and Steel Development in Bauchi, Permanent Secretary of the Mines Ministry assures the participants of an all-inclusive process in achieving the gains in the sector for the development of the nation's metal industry. Virtually everything we use today, either has components of metals or is a product of metallic equipment. In realizing the important content, the federal government under President Mohamed Buhari TCFR is taught now than ever to create an enabling environment of operators and all Meanwhile, a three-day capacity building workshop for technical working groups for National Development Plan is on in Abuja with the aim of facilitating the achievements of the medium-term National Development Plan 2021 to 2025 and the National Agenda 2050. Chimobi Walter Naji reports. The global economic shutdown has triggered efforts by various governments to rethink their macroeconomic framework to deal with emerging challenges posed by the global pandemic. Now, recently, the National Bureau of Statistics released a GDP figure of minus 6.10% for the second quarter of 2020. Though minimal compared to other countries, this has prompted Nigeria's efforts to build the capacities of the Secretariat heads of the technical working groups for the medium-term National Development Plan 2021 to 2025 and the National Agenda 2050 through this workshop. This way, we will have a truly national, Nigeria National Development Plan and not a plan of the federal government of Nigeria. In order to have a very robust outcome, it was thought wise to build the capacity of the major drivers of the process as the roles of technical working group anchors and heads of secretariat are critical towards the development of the plans. We have not only included a review of past national development plans and an introduction to understanding the macroeconomic framework for the creation of a mid-term national development plan, but also technical lectures on the development planning process, the institutional arrangements for an effective plan implementation, as well as a number of introductions to effective man management approaches. Participants are expected at the end of the training to help the country in changing its growth trajectory positively, having gone through various development programs. In Abuja, Shmobi, Walter Naji, NTA News. This is Nationwide on NTA. Time now to join Dotson Uwiemi in Lagos for more reports. Hello, Dotson. Thank you, Elizabeth. More residents of Lagos are becoming worried following the refusal of some patients with COVID-19 to submit themselves for isolation, as they believe this could lead to an increase of the disease in the state. Nosa Usula reports that the effects of the total lockdown caused by the virus are still fresh in their memories as they appeal for quick government intervention. 
several reports from across the country reveal how patients with COVID-19 avoid submitting themselves for treatment at designated isolation centers and in some extreme cases break out from the centers after being admitted. People are like really scared. They are thinking maybe the isolation centers are not real. And then something going around saying that this coronavirus thing is not real. So some people feel they don't have it. Some people actually have to go out daily to hustle for their means of livelihood. So they won't want to stay at home for a whole 14 days. They prefer to go outside and look for what to do. Lagos remains the epicenter of COVID-19 with about 16,000 confirmed cases of the disease. Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Aki Abayomi, who revealed at a press briefing in July that over 2,000 patients who tested positive for COVID-19 in the state have not turned up for admission at the isolation centers, stated that government had adopted home-based management of asymptomatic and mild COVID-19 cases. Chief Medical Director, Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Professor Chris Body, while sharing his experience with patients who had refused isolation and treatment at their facility, explained that patients with COVID-19 who are on the run and fail to submit themselves for isolation or do not properly isolate themselves when placed on home-based isolation are capable of truncating government's efforts to contain the spread of the deadly virus. What we have done at the Lagos University in Hospital, and which Lagos State is, has done very well too, has been to set up what we call an emotional and psychosocial support group. This is a group of psychiatrists, psychologists, and people who work in that area. So that our doctors, our nurses, our psychologists, our psychiatrists call such patients who are being violent or who are being rejecting or resenting the very process of isolation. And we they counsel them. And you should see the result. It's marvelous. Patients with COVID-19 were advised to desist from such acts as the country would record more transmission of the COVID-19 infection if more people continue to flee from being admitted or do not properly self-isolate when placed on home-based isolation. In Lagos, Nosa, Osula, NTA News. Poetry is an aspect of literature with its potential still waiting to be unnest. In this report, Hingenujan Adams takes a look at how Nigerian students are encouraged to embrace poetry at the fifth edition of its Nigerian Students Poetry Prize by the Poets in Nigeria Initiative. Our home is a heaven where we sit at the foot of the Iroko, lost in the rapture of chills dripping from grandmother's lips. Where we walk on red earth, counting the prints of our brothers. A genre of literature that uses aesthetic and rhythmic qualities of language indeed. Nasiba Babale is a medical laboratory scientist. Apart from her passion for saving lives through finding solutions for health problems, she has created a niche for herself in poetry for 10 years. The poetry landscape has enough space for potential William Shakespeare's, Chinua Achebe's, and Jack Mapanji's to display their creativity. That is why the Poets in Nigeria initiative is encouraging students to embrace poetry. With creativity, you will be intellectually sound. You will do a lot when you are creatively grounded. And I've always believed that in whatever we are doing, it's good to start from the scratch. So starting with students is like starting from the base. It has actually helped me to be a voice for people. I've written poems that speak on social issues and the like. When I'm under pressure but I have some spare time, it always gives me some sense of relief. I think it's the core of our soul as Africans. So, um, diversing yourself from poetry would mean that you're diversing yourself from your, who you really are. It brings out some abstract things which cannot really relate to living for. We should encourage people who have the talent, nurture them and promote them so that they could actually be more interested in participating in poetry related activities. Winners are motivated, organizers are hopeful that poetry is becoming more attractive and profitable to creative Nigerians.
in Lagos. Hengino John Adams, NTA News. Let's take the first break in Nationwide. More reports to come. NTA TV College Trust, an affiliate of Ahmad Bello University Zaria, is currently admitting students for its ordinary diploma programs in television journalism, television production, and television engineering. Interested candidates are advised to obtain relevant information concerning eligibility at our website at www.ntatvc.edu.ng or marketing department of any NTA station nationwide. For further information, contact Assistant Director Marketing NTA TV College Joss on 0803-314-4383 or the Academic Office of the College on 0806-980-9807. Announcer, Registrar. You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now. YouTube at NTA News Online or visit www.nta.ng For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop or iPad or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can beat the rich. The federal government says it will pursue a full private sector driven digital switchover as there have been no subsidies for set top boxes or for signal courage. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed disclosed this at a meeting with stakeholders in the DSO process in Abuja. Anthony Forsen reports. <laughs> The enthusiasm that trailed the launch of the digital switchover in just the Plateau State Capital in 2016, then Abuja, followed by Aquara, Kaduna, Enugu and Oshogo, left no one in doubt that the project was on course. In Abuja, as of today, on the Anadol platform, you have NT Abuja, you have ITV, you have STV, you have Channels TV, you have AIT. However, Following the stalling of the launch in other states, the availability of free TV brand under which the DSO is being delivered across the country gives hope that a lot can still be achieved. It is in the light of this that Laya Mohamed told the meeting that the process to acquire the much-needed funds to fast-track the DSO project and pay off all outstanding debts are in top gear to motivate stakeholders to resume the rollout which has a huge economic benefit to Nigerians. We are at a high level talks with the Federal Ministry of Finance and we are also putting finishing touches to a memo we plan to send to the Federal Reserve Council as part of our relentless efforts to secure the funds to restart the process. And we are very optimistic that our efforts will pay off very soon. While looking for funds to pay outstanding debts and restart the process, I want to put it on record here that we'll be pursuing a full private sector driven DSO and there will be no more subsidies, either of set up boxes of signal carriage. On audience measurement to drive advertisement, the minister said a process in that direction is already in place which will go a long way in driving advert spending to the DSO platforms and channels to help fulfill obligations to signal distributors. This meeting must come up with a strategic plan for a resume rollout with an express commitment to continue with the process until every state has been covered. Key issues discussed include DSO indebtedness, funding, as well as rollout time in Abuja. Antin Forsen, NTA News. 
Let's now talk water and hygiene. The National Orientation Agency, in partnership with the Federal Ministry of Water Resources, has flagged off a sensitization workshop on Clean Nigeria, used a toilet campaign for communication, orientation and mobilization offices. Kenneth Nanim reports that the first phase of the program regarded as training the trainer is across 12 states. Nigeria is one of the countries still grappling with the challenges of open defecation, poor sanitation and hygiene. As a result, outbreak of diseases like diarrhea, cholera, typhoid and child mortality are on the increase. With the executive order signed by President Muhammad Buhari in 2019, which gave birth to Clean Nigeria campaign, the country is expected to end open defecation, poor sanitation, inequitable access to portable water, amongst other issues, by 2025, in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 6. To achieve the set goals, the National Orientation Agency, in collaboration with the Ministry of Water Resources, are reaching out to citizens on the need to do away with open defecation, use the toilets, and practice personal hygiene. It's a transformational and behavior change campaign which seeks to mobilize high-level political support, resources, and the entire populace towards building a new culture of safe sanitation. This will require the contribution and commitment of everyone. We will work with you in line with the charter of President Buhari to ensure that all public places, including schools, hotels, fuel stations, Places of worship, marketplaces, hospitals, and the other offices have accessible toilets and the latrines within their premises. The Universal Public Health Campaign is also expected to flatten the curve and push the country on the free open defecation global statistics. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. Now, the fact that education remains the bedrock of development means teachers are very relevant in the scheme of things. And the federal government says it will continue to improve the standards through training and retraining. Minister of Education Adam Adam reiterated this when he visited the Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria in Abuja. Olayin Kaujo reports. Teachers may not actually have to get to heaven before getting their rewards after all. Some, if not most, can be received here on earth. And that is the news this occasion is hinting at. Whatever is coming to teachers is coming very soon and it will have its signature. This visit to the Teachers Registration Council by the Minister of Education is the first since 2016. And the message is to remind all unqualified teachers to register with the council or risk losing their jobs as schools prepare to resume. However, with the partial ease of the lockdown, schools have partially resumed and a lot is expected of teachers in ensuring the safety of our children and in recovering lost periods of study. The Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria has from 2016 to date said to have remitted more than 1 billion naira as 25% of internally generated revenue, in addition to monitoring professional standards of the profession in the country. Teachers in public school have, have, have largely done that. We have about 83% compliance with teachers in public school. Whereas it, we have a bit of challenge with our teachers in private schools. And that is why we are focusing more on private schools now. A block of offices was inaugurated by the minister during the visit. Online Kaoju, NTA News. <laughs> Now to COVID-19 update, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has announced 321 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the country. The breakdown of the new cases cutting across 24 states shows that Lagos has 98, FCT 34, Kaduna 30, Nasara 25, Benue 21, Plata 17, Rivers 15, Adamawa and Ogun states 11 each, Enugu 9, Edo 8, while Delta and Ikiti states have 7 each. Other states include Gombe with 5, Eboin 4, Bayelsa,
Kano and Ondo, three cases each. Cross River, Imo, Kebia, Niger, two each. While Abia and Bauchi states have one each. So far, Niger has 52,548 confirmed cases of COVID-19, with 39,257 treated and discharged, and 1,004 patients died of the virus. And it's time to join Felicia in our studio in Joss for more reports. Hello, Felicia. Hello, Elizabeth. Welcome to Joss. The Operation Safe Haven in Plateau State has handed over one of the six inmates that escaped from the High Court custody in Burkin Ladi to Nigerian Correctional Service Plateau State Command. A Cameron Kaneng Ladoja was there. Barely one month since the escape of six inmates from the High Court in Burkin Ladi on the 23rd of July this year, the manhunt launched by the Operation Safe Haven led to the rearrest of a second inmate, 19 year old. Adam Yusuf. Yusuf was discovered in an abandoned house in Bisichi village of Bertiladi local government area on the 18th of August this year by officers of the Operation Safe Heaven. For the Operation Safe Heaven, this serves as an encouragement to ensure the rearrest of the remaining four inmates who are at large. For the Plata State Command of the Nigerian Correctional Services, the effort of the Operation Safe Heaven is laudable. It's a good working relationship between security agency and Plata State. The Operation Safe Heaven and the Nigerian Correctional Services Plata State Command both appeal to residents to cooperate with security agencies as well as give useful information that will aid in the rearrest of the remaining inmates at large. In Joss, Ekemaran Kaneng Ladoja, NTA News. Nine communities devastated by rainstorm in the southern zone of Plateau State have received help from the member representing Mikang, Shandam, and Kwangpan constituency in the House of Representatives, Consul Alphonsus Longap. The donation was done in conjunction with the National Emergency Management Agency in the affected local government areas. Zenrate Dimun reports. The perennial rainfall caused havoc on some homes and destroyed farmlands in nine communities of Shandam, Mikang and Kwampan constituency, bringing untold hardship to the people. The member representing Shandam, Mikang and Kwampan in the Green Chambers, Comsol Alfonso Longap, in collaboration with the National Emergency Agency, NEMA, donated building materials and food items to alleviate the sufferings of the people. We carried out a joint, on a joint assessment with our sister agency, that's the State Emergency Management Agency, as to ascertain, ascertain the level of impact of these communities. And when the team came and went on the spot assessment, it was very devastating. It has overwhelmed the capacity of the local government and even the state. I expected them, those that are coming on behalf of the communities, to also take it back to the communities and do uh, distribution accordingly, so that each and every person that was affected by this flood should be able to benefit from it. Some of the beneficiaries expressed gratitude to the member for the provision of the materials. The nine benefiting communities include Kalong, Derilit, Tengzet, Menkat, Donko, Gongville, Gusa, and others. The member had earlier paid homage to the Longamai of Shandam, Ms. Com Martins Shoulders III, at his palace. In Joss, Zen Redding Moon, NTA News. This is Nationwide. More reports in Abuja as we rejoin Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Felicia. And from Joss, let's take you to a point where the state governor, David Umahi, says all developmental projects initiated by his administration will be completed before the end of his tenure. The governor stated this while inspecting ongoing projects in parts of the state. Kingsley Okoro tells us more. The successive government made their mark in the development of the state. Governor David Umahi's infrastructural development described as massive and life-touching has further transformed the state. The project, which some have been completed, and others at their various level of completion, include 13 flyovers to reduce accidents, Muhammad Buhari Tunnel, dualization of a Bakliki Enugu Highway. We are praising the governor 
He's trying a lot in Ebony State. He's making the, the way, the movement so freely for people. As everybody can see, everywhere is changing. All the projects, physical projects, human projects, and um, all the human development uh, aspect of his administration is geared towards uh, attainment of sustainable development goal. Now we enjoy a very smooth road about the state that has the smoothest road, network of road. And we appreciate the governor for this. Governor David Umahin, while inspecting ongoing projects in parts of the state said he embarked on the massive projects to rewrite the history of a bony state once regarded as one of the backward states in the country. We glorify God that he gave me the opportunity to rework the road that could last for another 70 years. And that's why we're using concrete. We are encouraged. The people are optimistic that Governor Omahi will make good of his promise of completing the projects before bowing out of office. In Abakaliki, Kingsley Okoro, NTA News. And for more reports on Nationwide, let's show Chinanye in our Inugu Network Center. Nice to see you, Chinanye. It's nice to see you too, Elizabeth. Good evening and welcome to Enugu. About 2.26 billion naira has been disbursed for various micro projects in rural communities in Enugu State under the World Bank Assisted Community and Social Development Project, CSDP, from 2009 to date. Assessing the level of project implementation in the state as the project team winds down, a team from the Federal Support Unit of the National Agency for CSDP appreciated the success story of the program in Enugu State. Susan Eze reports that the team was at the government house in Enugu. CSDP is a World Bank project in Nigeria which began in 2009 with a credit portfolio of $450 million per while competing states draw down the fund for the development of the rural communities in their various states by accomplishing the counterpart funding requirement. As the project wraps up soon, the head of the agency's support monitoring unit, on behalf of the national coordinator, expressed satisfaction with the machineries put in place by the Enugu State Government for sustenance of the program to strengthen its rural development agenda. Enugu State is one of the states that have utilized these resources as provided by in line with its drive to minimize rural-urban drift in the state, the Enugu State Government gave assurance that the state would continue to partner agencies with programs of grassroots development. The law establishing the agency in the state was repealed and reenacted. Acting General Manager Enugu CSDP Samuel Ezugu and the State House of Assembly Committee Chairman on CSDP Paul Najofo are optimistic that the concrete plans already put in place to consolidate on the gains of the World Bank project would yield bountiful fruits. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. Candidates sitting for the West African Senior School Certificate Examination in Enugu are obeying all the COVID-19 protocols. Our correspondent reports that the physical distancing also helped to check malpractices. These students are taking biology in the ongoing WIAC examinations. A visit to some schools in the metropolis shows that the students are abiding by the rules and regulations of the examinations while observing the COVID-19 protocols. Some examination invigilators and principals of schools commended the efforts of the federal and state governments in providing a conducive environment and protective equipment for the students. The examination in my school has been going well. We have no problem. The school is maintaining the conditions set by the NCDs. As you can see, we have our sanitizer, our washing bucket. The students, they even have their individual sanitizers. We try our best to see that we comply to NCDC regulations. As you can see, the students are well spaced and they are putting on their face masks. They noted that the COVID-19 protocol, such as the physical distancing and spacing out in classes, has helped in checking exam malpractice amongst students. The West African examinations is usually held between May and June every year, but this year's examination started in August 17th due to the coronavirus pandemic. 
And that is it from Enugu. Elizabeth, it's back to you in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you so much, Chinenye. Now, to the judiciary, the Supreme Court has fixed 31st of August to deliver judgment in the appeal brought before it by the governorship candidates of the People's Democratic Party, Musawada, and his party, PDP, challenging the re election of Governor Yaya Bello of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in the November 16th. 2019 governorship election in the state. Judiciary correspondent Vera Chumba, who was at the Supreme Court, now reports. On the 23rd of May, the Kogi State governorship election, which started in Abuja in a split decision of two to one, reaffirmed Aina declaration and returned Yayabelu as validly elected governor of Kogi State. The tribunal also resolved four other petitions in its favor. Dissatisfied with the decision of the tribunal, the four parties approached the Court of Appeal and the court also dismissed the appeal. The three appeals were filed by the People's Democratic Party, Social Democratic Party and Democratic People's Party. The PDP is insisting that its candidate Musa Wada won the November 16th governorship election. The appellant had claimed that the election which brought in Yaya Bello as the governor of Kogi State was marred by serious irregularities. In their brief of argument, counsel to the appellant, Jabri Okutakbe, SAN, urged the court to allow the appeal while the respondent counsels Joseph Daudu and Abubakar opposed the application and urged the court to dismiss the appeal with substantial cost. The seven-man panel of justices led by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Tanku Mohammed, after listening to the submission of the counsels, dismissed the appeal filed by the Democratic People's Party for being a mere academic exercise and awarded a cost of 200,000 naira against the party. We have done what we need to do. Appeal has been adjourned. So we leave the rest for their lordships to do what they needed to do. All the parties have uh, uh, adopted and argued their cases. The lower courts had, in a concurrent judgment, dismissed the appeal for failure to prove the allegations of electoral mark practices. In Abuja, Viera Chumba, NTA News. From the judiciary, we now move to political matters. The People's Democratic Party has restated its resolve towards the conduct of peaceful and transparent primary election into the Senatora by elections in Lagos, Cross River and Bayelsa states. Timothy Yusuf reports that the resolution followed the visit of members of the party from the affected states to the National Secretariat in Abuja. Members of the PDP have been visiting the Wadata House National Secretariat of the party for what they described as wider consultation ahead of the senatorial elections into the Lagos seat and Cross River North senatorial districts following the death of the senators representing the senatorial zones. For Bayelsa State, seats for two senatorial districts are vacant. The seats were vacated by the governor of Bayelsa State, Doye Diri, and his deputy, Lawrence Rujako. We will continue as part of our responsibilities to call the attention or bring to the attention what is happening in our society. We will not fail in our duty to do that. The woman who departed, the woman who just exited, I contested the election with her and I fared very well in the field. Whatever it takes to ensure that the will of the people prevails is what we will do. The leadership of the PDP is confident that the party will always put the people's collective aspirations at the forefront of its objectives and endeavor to discourage the imposition of candidates, as this will ensure the emergence of best individuals for elective positions. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. And Agatha in Benin has the next set of reports on Nationwide. Hello, Agatha. Elizabeth, a warm welcome to Benin. Wife of the All Progressives Congress APC candidate for the Edo governorship election, Professor Idia Izayamu, has assured women in Edo State that victory for her husband at the polls will translate to empowerment and better life for them. She was in Owen West local government area to canvass support for him. The PDP candidate, Governor Gordon Obaseki, on the other hand, has charged the people to hold politicians accountable for their words. 
It was when he led campaign team of the party to Asan Central Local Government Area. Ediago reports that while social distancing guideline was not observed at the rallies, party leaders and only a few supporters had the face mask on. Women from Owan West, Owan East and Akoko Edo converged on Uzeba in Owan West to receive wife of the APC candidate, Professor Idia Ize Iyamu, accompanied by wife of the running mate, Hajia Nana Audu. I stand here as woman. All of us be woman. I stand here as doctor. I want to tell you that say, she wants me to change her. We go begin to make sure our children, the ones where they are born newly are the ones up to five years. They are not going to pay food for treatment. The women of Edo North will be empowered, mentor them, train them on different skills. Professor Ize Yamu and an entourage visited the APC leader in Owan East, Alaji Abdul Ganiu Lawani, to seek more support. Meanwhile, the campaign train of the PDP was in Irwa, Uesa, Ibore, Ewan Ubekun in Esan Central, where the party's candidate gave reasons why he should be re elected. But without road, we can go feed the farm. That is why this is our government. We say we go do road for now. We know if we do all the road at the same time because the money not there. But if we do small, small, after some years, we go not do all the road when they don't be so. He was also at the palace of the Ogirwa of Irwa. Okaigesan of Isanland, as well as that of the Enoji of Ewu for blessings. In Benin, Ede Agu, NTA News. In the meantime, the state chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, is calling for political campaigns devoid of violence, acrimony, and hate speech. It is, in addition, suing for free, fair, peaceful, and credible governorship election in Edo State next month. These are parts of resolution of the association at the end of a crucial meeting on the governorship election. For Khan, protecting the interests and well-being of believers who constitute the electorate remains paramount. Reminding politicians that it is only when Edo citizens are safe that candidates can govern them and implement their manifestos. The association wants heads of churches to warn members of their congregation against use of violence, which can cause lives. It also called on the electorate to go out en masse to vote for candidates of their choice. Ken condemns all actions, reactions, and threats to the safety of the people. Can believe that political campaigns should provide a veritable and enabling opportunity for candidates to market their manifestos to their electorates. This is a crucial moment in determining the destiny of our state and those state, bearing in mind the very future of this state. The future of our children. Khan appreciated the Benin monarch and other traditional rulers in the state for their support in ensuring that Edo citizens are cautioned against use of violence in the coming election. That's it from here. Elizabeth, you're on. Thank you, Agatha. Now, to religious matters, the Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission has solicited the support of the Christian community to ensure hitch-free pilgrimage exercises in the Holy Land. This was at a stakeholders' meeting on strategizing the commission's activities in the northeast. Zara Omar Adamo reports from Gombe. The meeting themed Creating Inclusive Governance Atmosphere is an engagement with state secretaries and the executive secretary of the Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission to know the progress and challenges of various boards and the way forward. We use the opportunity to also address uh, the church, as you know that I'm wearing two caps at the same time. I will address the Khan leadership and also visit some of our traditional fathers uh, so that we encourage uh, leadership at all levels. The meeting is going to refocus the boards of the Northeast sub-region. 
on how to move forward. And uh, most likely, we will, yes. su we will succeed. This is also very strategic. It's strategic in the sense that the ES is going from one geopolitical zone to the other to look at peculiar situations in each geopolitical zone. What are their challenges? This meeting is giving us a signal, a positive signal, that something tangible will come. And uh, from uh, what the executive secretary has already said, the package has been reduced, slashed down. The executive secretary will also seek effective collaboration with church leaders and traditional rulers to help organize seamless pilgrimage programs and to fashion out ways forward for progress of the commission. Zara Omar Adam, NTA News. Let's shift attention to child protection, providing special protection and justice to children who are exposed to rape, child labor, trafficking and other difficult situations will reduce their trauma and enable them adjust to decent life. These are the views of the Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development, Pauline Tallinn, at a one-day sensitization and awareness creation seminar in Uyo. Uruak Aitim reports. Violence against children has in recent times reached alarming proportion and COVID-19 presented the most difficult times for children globally. The mandate of sensitizing the populace on the rights of the children in Nigeria prompted the hosting of a one-day sensitization and awareness creation seminar in Uyo by the Federal Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development in collaboration with the Minister of Women Affairs and Social Welfare, Akwaibum State. The seminar has accorded us a lot of um, lessons that we're going to apply in our own duties to safeguard the, the rights of the children. That really impacted so much knowledge on us on ending gender-based violence. Minister, Federal Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development, Pauline Talon, represented by Deputy Director, called for continuous awareness to ensure protection of children's rights. The Federal Ministry of Women Affairs has also developed several strategies to ensure the protection of the rights of the child. In our five home states, the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Welfare, in conjunction with other relevant agencies, have been working tirelessly to ensure full implementation of the child rights law. Papers were presented on different topics, including understanding of the Child's Rights Act, among others. Uduak Etam, NTN News. And in other news, the Naval Officers' Wives Association, NOAA, has inaugurated various welfare projects in Karshi aimed at rendering assistance to families of naval officers and ratings, as well as providing employment opportunities for members of the host community, among other social benefits. Defence correspondent Najatu Tijani reports. An empty school compound and zero class activities, the site which greets our media crew on arriving the NOAA Educational Centre in Karshi, Nasara State. A result of the impact of COVID-19 on education and other key sectors of the country. Undeterred by the rain and optimistic about the future, NOAA proceeds to inaugurate a few projects expected to promote social integration, support families of naval and the host community, and provide employment among other social benefits. Therefore, we are investing a lot of resources to provide the necessary facilities. The chief of the naval staff is very happy that NOAA is also striding along with his own vision of ensuring that personnel's welfare are being absolutely taken care of. Other projects inaugurated by the association with support from the Chief of Naval Staff include a shopping complex named after the NOAA president, a recreational park and facility office complex, Najaatu Tijani, NTA News. This is Nationwide on NTA. Let's take a break now. More to come. <laughs> she cried. She cries in anguish and in pain. She bears the scourge of her grief. She toils in vain for justice and succumbs to silence. He gloats over his malady like a beast 
he pounces with no remorse. Her cry means nothing. Her pain feeds her shame. Like an orphan, she's left to grieve in solitude. But no more will she cry in vain. Her adversaries will henceforth bear the brunt of their cruelty. Rape is evil. Rape is a plague. A pandemic of monumental consequences. We must unite and kick it out of our society. Connect with NTA and stand against rape and rapist. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. ICPC and NTA say you can help Nigeria to flatten the curve on COVID-19 just as you can help flatten the curve on corruption. Follow transparency, accountability, and integrity just as you follow health guidelines. Stay home with integrity and maintain your distance from corruption just as you stay away from COVID-19 by maintaining social distance. Report every act of corruption to ICPC just as you report COVID-19 to NCDC. Stay away from corruption. Stay safe from COVID-19. Report any act of corruption to ICPC on toll-free number 0800-2255-4272. This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. Thanks for staying with the NTA. Leaders of unions and associations have been urged to return their organizations to the core values on which they were founded. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria say this will address the challenges in Unions, elections and governance that have become the norm in recent times. Kunle Adeye reports. Of the Nigeria Medical Association and alleged malpractices in the election of the Nigerian Bar Association as some of the latest leadership crises rocking the trade unionism in Nigeria. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria said the recent developments undermine the primary aim of aspiring to lead such unions, which is promoting the welfare of members. As much as possible, unions must re return back to the core values for which they were funded. You know, I want to the basic principle of uh, any professional association trade union is unity. You must be united because if you are not united, you can't fight your oppressors. You know. Uh, uh, secondly, there must be democracy. When you, you are well grounded in the union activities, you, you just seamlessly go in there. If there is transparency and accountability and due process, you, if you have your integrity intact, people will follow you. While admitting that it is practically unavoidable to have disagreements, the guests urge leaders to embrace internal conflict resolution mechanism to settle differences. And uh, for any member of a professional body or association that is willing to serve the people, that wish to personify the objectives and the core values of the association, then violence is not um, your, your, your calling because you are offering yourself to serve. We don't run a one-man show. We, we don't hide information. We're very transparent and um, very accountable. We make everything known to every member to the extent of um, producing a copy, um, possibly before the meetings, before every uh, meeting of the organ holds. They unanimously agreed that respect for unions' constitution, inclusive governance, political education, and holding leaders accountable are the antidotes to addressing challenges in unions' elections and governance. In Abuja, Kunle Adeyeye, NTA News. Talking sports, fans clamor out for return of live TV football matches in Nigeria. Tamara Ibiri brings us more on sports updates. As Nigerian, forward to the 2020-2021 season of domestic